Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. I'm Katie, my husband is Ryan, and we are growing our family and building our little homestead. Cloudy and it just got pretty kind of chilly. We're in, he's in a long sleeve, but I'm in short sleeves, but I'm kind of chilly right now. And so I just came out to give the ducklings a little more water. I have little pans for them. So I did move them outside. They've been going outside every day and I bring them inside every night. And I did turn their light off at night. They no longer need a light on them at night. Ducklings grow so much faster than chicks, like chicken chicks. <laughs> so, because it is cloudy though, and a little bit cooler, I'm going to go ahead and leave the plants out for longer than I had anticipated. I planned on leaving my plants out. I'm hardening them off, and so I leave them out an hour longer each day in full sun. And so today I'm going to leave them out maybe seven or eight hours. I was planning on leaving them out for six hours, but I'll show you the clouds here in a second. And, well, you can probably see them right behind me. See how cloudy and it's like really cool. I, it feels like a storm is moving in, but I looked on Google and it doesn't say that there's a storm coming. So I don't know, maybe there's a storm coming. To me, it feels like there's a storm coming, which I'm not surprised because we usually get one more freeze. So I'm pretty sure that it's going to freeze one of these days. And I wouldn't be surprised if it happened this evening. <laughs> Here's the plants. I put them out at seven. That one is getting a little sun scald from the other day. I think it'll be okay though. So they're doing pretty good, especially these ones that I've really been careful about. And then these nasturtiums, I've never had nasturtium that big. I'm super excited. So I only got two nasturtium plants, but they are looking great. But yeah. The plants seem to really like the cloudy day. Let's see if I can get some better pictures of the clouds. Just really interesting weather. <laughs> Here's the ducklings. I just filled up their water pans. Once they get a little bigger, I'll give them bigger pans and eventually they get a little baby pool and eventually they'll just be out running around. But right now, they're in there. You see duckies? And the mother hen has been leaving them alone. Actually, this morning, she kind of, when I brought them out, she kind of came up and said, like, she didn't peck them or anything. She just looked, came up to them really close, kind of looked at them and like, yeah, hey, welcome back. Like, she's not like motherly to them or anything, but she wasn't like aggressive. So she's kind of accepted them into her little flock that, hey, they're going to come out every morning and be with us every day. And then they go in the house every night. Like she's accepted that they live with her now. <laughs> so it's kind of cute. I wish that they would just go under her, but the other night, it was so interesting, the hen actually took her babies up on top of the coop, and they were still nestled underneath her, but she took them up there. I wish I would have got a video of that. It was really neat. I've never seen that behavior before, so it was really cool, but they're doing good.
be outside. He's supposed to be taking a nap, but he just wouldn't. On the menu tonight for our cooking from scratch challenge is chicken and dumplings. But I forgot to defrost the chicken last night. So chicken and dumplings is going on the menu for tomorrow. But I'm going to prepare the chicken and cook the chicken tonight after the kids are in bed, like later. So, or, or while I'm doing dinner for tonight. Because the chicken and dumplings recipe that I'm using calls for stewed chicken and you cook it, I don't know, for like five hours or something longer than, longer bef And so that's like, you cook the chicken for five hours before you use it in the recipe for the chicken and dumplings. Which is good because I also have chicken noodle soup on the menu for this week. So I'm thinking that the chicken I'm defrosting now will be used for those two purposes, for both of those. And I'm going to actually save the chicken stock from the stewed chicken for that. I'm getting a phone call. One second. Just a spam call. But I don't have all the numbers for the school saved and so I've been getting random calls from the school like two two weeks ago or was it a week ago that Haley had a stomach ache? I think it was two weeks ago. And I went to pick her up. I think she was totally faking. But anyway, I I missed the call from the school because I didn't have the number saved, and then I, um, anyway, I got a text from the school, and so I'm like, oh, I hate that they had to text me, so I don't want to be irresponsible, so I've been trying to answer my phone a lot better, especially, too, because I've been also waiting for the quail eggs, which I will give a quick update on the quail eggs. They did email me again, so I emailed them asking about the eggs. They said that their chicken, um, chickens, their quail were laying slower, than they had anticipated, so orders were a little backed up, which I was totally fine with. And then a week later, so it was this Friday, they actually emailed again asking if I wanted a refund or if I wanted to be on the wait list because their their chicks or quail, what do you call quail? Just call them quail? Their hens? You probably call them hens. Their hens were are still not laying as quickly as they thought they would. And I said, please just leave me on the wait list. So I have already paid for them. So as soon as they are, you know, as soon as they can get to my order, they will. I'm super excited about it. I'm not in a rush. Building materials are crazy, out of this world expensive right now. So I don't mind waiting for the quail because we do need to build their hutches still. Which I wouldn't have minded building them a more expensive hutch. I, You know, I would have. But if we can kind of ride out this building material crisis then and build the quail hutches later, that will work out to our benefit. So it's I've got the incubator all set up still. So as soon as they ship... I will be ready. I'm just going to keep that one plugged in, waiting for those eggs. And I've been watching it. it the temperature started getting a little bit higher. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with that, but I'll keep you updated. So chicken and dumplings are for tomorrow. And I'll probably use some of that chicken for chicken noodle soup as well later on in the week. And tonight's dinner is called carrot rice bake. So that's what I'm going to be making tonight. It's called carrot rice bake. One more thing I'll say before I... I'm done with the talking portion of this video because then we're going to get on to cooking with cute little videos uh, and cute music. The chicks, my chicken eggs, are doing really well. I did not, I said that, I had mentioned that I was going to pull out the eggs on day 14 that weren't developing or growing. I decided not to do that for two reasons. The first reason is on day 18, I need to pull all the eggs out anyway and take the egg turner out and lay all the eggs on their side to get them preparing for hatching. So I thought, I'm gonna be pulling them all out anyway. Why would I do it on day 14 and day 18 when it's only four days apart from each other? So that was number reason number one. And then last night I was getting ready to do it because I was like, oh, I'll just do it. And then the boys, I had told all my kids to go to bed. It was like nine o'clock at night, which is way later than I let them stay up on a school night. This is our last week of school. So I've been more lenient with rules, but, um, Anyway, they wanted to stay up and do it with me, and I said, no, it's already 9 o'clock. I usually put you guys in bed at 7.30, and I don't want you to be grouchy tomorrow, which they kind of were grouchy this morning, so <laughs> don't let them stay up later. <laughs> lesson learned. Well, I've learned this lesson a couple times. I'm still learning it. It's just so close to summer that I'm just sort of getting really relaxed on my normal schedule and rules. So anyway... The eggs are doing well. I'm not pulling them out until day 18 when I pull the turner out. And when I pull the egg turner out, there will not be any more short clip one minute videos because I want 
to, I'm doing an experiment with this incubator to see how many eggs will hatch. And it's because I had a super poor hatch rate with my first batch of eggs that I ever did in this incubator. So I'm wanting to try and do everything exactly by the book this time. So somebody's on the piano over there. I'm gonna stop this video and start on the cooking. So just wanted to give you a quick egg update. We're on day 15. They should be hatching Saturday or Sunday. Oh. Did you climb up there? Good job. Good job. The recipe I'm doing tonight is carrot rice bake. It is found on page 395 in the new cookbook that I'm using by Better Homes and Garden. Better Homes and Garden? Gardens. All right, now let's do our ingredient check. We need carrots. I don't think I'm using that whole bag. <laughs> Just showing you. I actually haven't opened that bag yet because the other recipe I used our baby carrots for. And I still have a lot of those. And they're still doing just fine. They're still kicking. Water, which is in the sink. Long grain rice, which is in a big bucket right down here. Salt. Cheese. Milk, I'm using powdered milk, so I'll be mixing it per the instructions. Eggs, I forgot the eggs. I have a million eggs right now. Let's use duck eggs. Ah! It almost fell out. I started pulling it and the little drawer almost fell out and then all those eggs would have splatted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> eggs. These are duck eggs. Two beaten eggs, it says. You can read that label. Don't read it, Levi. It says onion. Oh, are you okay with that? Okay, it's granulated onion. This is actually the recipe that called for minced dried onion, and I couldn't find it anywhere, so I just picked up granulated Levi, onion. I thought that might be the closest. And some pepper. Yeah. Right, it's a casserole, so that's what I'm doing.
one's a good one. Here are the plants. They stayed out about seven hours today. Tomorrow I'm going to have them stay out nine hours. This one has really bad sun scald. I tried to harden it off too quickly. So it should grow back just fine. But I was trying to harden it off faster because my customer wanted it tomorrow. So I'll just let her know. She, you can just trim that branch off and it'll be just fine. Or just leave it. <laughs> it'll be fine. But here they are. This basil is really loving the sun. I'm hoping this next weekend I'll be able to plant a lot of these in the ground. It's a little earlier than I like. I usually just wait till the first week of June, but this is my kids' last week of school, so if I can get the garden in this weekend after school is out, I'm going to be pretty excited about that. And I'll just keep watching the weather, because last year I waited until June 1st to plant, and then on June 9th we got a freeze. And it's like, I can't wait until like June 20th to plant, you know what I mean? I need to just... Watch the weather, and if there's going to be a freeze, it'll be, it'll be a light freeze. It wouldn't be anything hard. If there's going to be a freeze or any kind of weather that I think is going to damage my plants, I'll just cover them in the evening with like a sheet, blanket, anything like that. A uh, light, light blanket, not nothing that's going to damage your stems or anything. Maybe some plastic sheeting, maybe... Maybe even like a Walmart bag. I've also got milk cartons cut in half. I could cover them with all of those things and that would protect it from the frost. Hopefully it wouldn't stunt the growth. On it. Like I'm saying, that, that June 9th freeze was just crazy last year. We don't hardly ever get freezes after the first weekend of June. So it was kind of crazy. But I'm just over here thinking, well, if I wait till June every year, it's just... Is putting my harvest off a little later and a little later and that was kind of hard to wait <laughs> but not only that it's very warm right now and I don't anticipate I don't anticipate bad weather coming but if it does come I'm just gonna be watching the weather so I do plan on planting some things this weekend I don't plan on planting all my things especially not the peppers I'm gonna wait to plant my peppers until it's above I think it's above 60 is what they need. I'll have to check on that. But I think last year I waited until it was above 60, which it was a lot later than the rest of my garden going in. But it really paid off, and I got a lot of peppers from it. But, and I'm hoping to get enough peppers to can this year. So last year I just got enough to, like, eat. And, like, I ate a lot in fried eggs and stuff like that. So anyway... Thanks for hanging out with me today. The carrot rice bake looks amazing. I'm really excited about this meal. <laughs> it's going to be yummy. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you're having a great day. Bye. Oh, if you haven't, please do like and subscribe. We appreciate it. Bye.